What is up family? It's your boy D coming right back at you with another one. Right now we're back in the lab and a demo is on the menu. What is up family? Here it is. I promise you guys this demo a long long time ago and I have to apologize at how long it's been but here it is. This is the uh, little bitty amplifier that I picked up from Parts Express about six months ago. Yeah I have been using it. Yeah it's still not in a case right now. I just been kind of using it in the raw because the project that I have for it it's just, I just can't find time to do it, just being honest with you guys. But this is going to be the demo of it to kind of like let you guys see what it sounds like, um, how it outputs, and all the things that I like and don't like about this little bitty amplifier. For all the people who are wondering, the um, part number for this thing is, it, I got this from Parts Express, like I mentioned at first. The part number is... 320-620. It has this weird name on it. It's a uh, TPS 3116D2 Class D 2.1 amplifier board, and it promises a 250 watt output and a 100 watt output. But of course, we will be the judge of that. It got two big caps that stands out on top of it, and a small heat sink for the small chipset underneath there well the, in relation to the size of the chipset itself this heat sink is actually massive to be honest with you the uh, chipset up under it is about the same as this little pink connector you see there on the uh, the board so uh, what do we have going on here the front knobs right here actually controls this one right here controls the main volume this one right here controls the subwoofer volume and this right here controls the two mains right here. So you have your left and right channel and you have subwoofer output right here. And to be honest with you, the subwoofer is not crossed over properly at all. I mean, what would you expect from something with a small footprint like this, right? Uh, you do hear talking coming through the subwoofer. If you guys are wondering what this is right here, this is my uh, HF uh, reference series subwoofer from... Uh, Dayton Audio also purchased from Parts Express and these little speakers right here are the Dayton Audio um, B452's and these are the ones with the air motion tweeter right there. Some of them come with the uh, different types of tweeters. This one here is the air motion one and I think the other one is a uh, Mylar tweeter if I'm not mistaken. These little guys here do pretty pretty good in what I had them set up as um, in my uh, in my garage right now. I have them on my television, actually being powered by this little amplifier right here, and they do a pretty good job. I'm not complaining about it at all uh, for what I wanted to do. I don't want. I know this thing is not going to be shaking down the walls or nothing like that. It does exactly what is expected of it, but I'm gonna let you guys be the judge of that. Uh, right now what I'm going to do is go to YouTube and I'm going to pick me some royalty free music. Uh, this one here is Adventures by uh, Himitsu. And as you can see it says no copyright music. Hopefully that's <laughs> that's the truth. Hopefully and I don't get flagged. But uh, anyway this is coming straight out of YouTube's uh, repository I believe. So what I'm going to do is just hit play. And right now just for reference this thing is halfway. All of them are midway. And I'm going to be turning them up as we go along in the demo. But for right now, let me grab my seat. And hopefully, you guys will get some flex <laughs> from this 8. I think this 8 inch is actually uh, rated at 250 watt RMS. Of course, this promises 100 watt. But to be in all fairness, it says it promises 100 watt um, per sub channel. 
and it's 50 watts per sub channel. Uh, I mean, per per left and right channel, 50 watts per left and right channel with a specific power supply. Uh, the power supply I have on it right now is in, I, I guess I may as well just let you guys see that as well. It right now is a oh, 65 watt uh, power supply. It is a 18.5 uh, uh, volt power supply at 3.5 amps. And this thing did say that in order to get, okay, it went off. Okay, it, that thing easily disconnects. This is one thing, might as well just go ahead and get into it. One thing I don't like about this little amplifier is the sound that it makes when it connects power. The sound that it makes. And it makes the speaker jump crazy as hell. I'm not going to be able to get the speaker jumping on camera because, hey, let's be, I'm not an octopus, right? I only got two arms. I'm not going to be able to show you. Maybe I will. Let me, let me see how far this thing can reach. I may be able to sit it on the table and one-handed. I'm becoming an expert at one-handing things here on the channel. So let's see if I can get this speaker moving, this speaker pop as I get it connected here. It's quite bad. I really don't like it. Ah, uh, I guess I'm not an expert at one-handing stuff. Come on. God damn it. Let me just get it in the hole first and then. Okay. Cool. You see that? That is fucking bananas. That's what I don't like about it. It's not so hard on these little guys because they're sealed, right? But on a sub, have you seen it? It actually made the rubber, the surround crinkle. That is not good. Very, very much not good. I think maybe it needs some resistors or something within the lines to protect against that. You know, I don't think it has enough of uh, protection against that surge of energy. But anyway, I'll look into that later. I may be able to, to remedy that. And then again, who knows, I may not be able to remedy it. But anyway, enough of me yapping. I guess go ahead with the demo. Like I said at first, this thing here is turned up 90% to, to prevent some distortion. And this guy right here, for right now, is 100, is 50% is on everything. 50%, and I'm going to be turning it all the way up for you guys. So, here goes. Let me make sure my volume is good. Yeah, it's about 90%. And about 90%. All right, so. These are the left and right volume. Let's turn the mains up. That's all the way up.
guys. So that's pretty much it. Like I said uh, in the beginning, there are some things about this little amplifier that I, that I like and that I don't like. For one, what I like about the little amplifier is that it actually gives you two different ways of connecting your power. Right here you got a good hard wire. And right here you can actually put a barrel connector right here if you have one that size and connect it straight like that. Which is fine, you know, if you want to go internally, have it battery powered or something like that. That'll be excellent right here, which is actually what I plan on doing with this. I hope you guys stick with me on this uh, project. I'm going to be putting this inside of a of an enclosure, and I'm going to be um, actually using some lithium-ion batteries that I have laying around, and I'm going to be wiring. I have th two 3S LiPo batteries, and I'm going to be wiring in um, parallel, and what that is going to do that is going to, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to be wiring them in, in series. And what is what that's going to do is actually allow me to get a 24 volt charge going to this little guy. And I'm really going to see, and we're really going to see what type of output that it that it has. Like, like I said, right now, it's actually uh, only receiving 18.5 volts. And it says that it's recommending... 24 volts in order to give his maximum output now is that clean energy? I mean is that a clean signal is it clipping? I have no idea uh, I know I, I'm not gonna be just banging it at full volume all the time But if need be and that you want to do that then you have that headroom to do it But like I said for right now it's in the garage when we go in there and we work out me and my family we use it uh, have it connected to one like I said a monitor in there and it does exactly what we needed for do, to do in a uh, single car garage. So I like the little guy. What I don't like about it, like I told you, were, was that pop when you first connect it. I hate that. I don't know at this point what to really do about it. I got to do a little bit of research. Or maybe you guys can help me. Like if you guys have ran into a problem like this, what did you do to solve the problem? You know, leave a, a tip in the comment section below and please help your boy out because that's very, very irritating. And like I said, I've this is a 250 watt uh, subwoofer, and you've seen how it just crinkled it all up, like the surround or whatever. When it made it excursed, like it the, uh, made it excursed, the uh, it looked like it reached its X max. Just hooking this thing up, you know, that's that's very very frustrating to me because it it makes me believe that um, what this thing is doing is pretty much deteriorating the lifespan of my speakers. And I don't like that. And like I said, you don't really see the strain that it's having on the little guys because this is a sealed chamber and they have a little bit more resistance against all that. But at the same time, the same amount of power that it took to move that thing is also being put through these little guys. So I, I don't like that at all, uh, which is kind of which is kind of what have uh, prevented me from using it as much as I wanted to and actually finishing a project with it because I didn't want to complete a project and have not Remy that you know that issue but uh please you know if somebody out there knows something about that please uh reach out to your boy let me know what's going on with that so I can fix it but in the meanwhile I'm going to be uploading a different video like I said these are the B uh these are the, the four and a half inch of these uh of these speakers but you also have if I can reach over here right quick. You also have the Big Brothers. Ooh, look at that dust. These things, been, <laughs> they've been sitting up, guys. I'm sorry. I bought so many of them at one time for a 7.2 surround system, surround sound system in my bedroom. And I only used a few of them. I didn't use all of them. But these are the Big Brothers. These are the Big Brothers to that guy. So you have a four and a half inch right here, and this is a six and a half inch. So you got a little bit more surface area to work with, a little bit more cabin space to work with. And actually, in actuality, what I was planning on doing was actually using this little guy inside of this little inside of one of these guys right here. If you can tell, it's actually small enough to fit inside of this guy right here. But this is sealed, and this is not. This is sealed as well. What I wanted to do was take this little guy here, uh, put him, like, mount him, like, in the side, right? And um, actually have him uh, port it. Port both the ones that I have to see just what it would sound like because I got two extra ports that will fit in this thing and bring them two into around uh, 50 hertz. Just tune it to around 50 hertz, see what it sounds like. And, um, yeah, and go from there. Have this internal and just have it connecting 
to the uh, have it wired to his uh, to his brother to his twin. But uh, that's enough for right now. The video ain't about this guy. The video is supposed to be about this guy and that thing. And um, the next video is going to be about this guy and that thing. So, so just stay tuned, guys. Um, if you like the video, you already know what to do. If you didn't like the video, by all means, this is a free country. Give it a thumbs down. If you feel like I could have done something better, please leave a comment in the section below. And for all help that you guys may have to remedy the situation that I have, please use the comment section below. And until next time, it's your boy D, and I'm out.